Please join me in welcoming Ambassador Keshap to deliver the opening plenary and address on the State of the Council. I don't think I've ever had disco and EDM music ever piped in when I was walking up on stage. <laughs> Frumpy old people don't usually get that honor accorded to them. Good morning, everybody. Okay, maybe some of you have had coffee. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Yeah, that's good. I love that. So, friends, um, congratulations. You're here. You're in New Delhi. You're in this wonderful hotel in the very heart of town. Uh, whatever you did to get here, all of the effort and planning and work, thank you for coming. Thanks for being part of this party today. This is a celebration. It's a festival. I want to start by thanking my entire team. They have put in literally thousands of hours to organize this event. And I pay tribute to them because without them, this would not be possible. What we're doing today would not be possible. I also want to thank and recognize a whole slew of people, uh, including our honorable chair, Ed Knight, uh, who has flown in all the way from New York. Ed, thank you to join us, for joining us. Rahul Sharma, the Managing Director of USIBC India, the entire USIBC team, thank you very, very much. I bow to all of you. Uh, our global board is here, uh, people who put in time and money and attention to support this organization, to support the institution that is the United States India Business Council, a 49-year-old institution that will celebrate 50 years next year in India and in the United States. To our board, I appreciate your time. I also want to thank our sponsors. Um, as the old saying goes, without you, this would not be possible. We had a whole slew of corporate sponsors that showed significant and sustained support for our enterprise, and in particular, making sure that this is a bright beacon of amplification of the positivity of the US-India relationship. Uh, at the platinum level, the highest level, NASDAQ, led by our honorable chair, Ed Knight. Thank you, NASDAQ. They also hosted us at their brilliant offices in Bengaluru uh, a couple days ago. Really fun time with them. Uh, we've also done some bell ringings with NASDAQ with uh, visiting Indian officials that have been really fun. If you ever have a chance to do a NASDAQ bell ringing in Times Square, go do it. It's a party. And uh, Ed Knight is the uh, cruise director for a marvelous experience. Uh, TransUnion, I don't know if Todd Skinner's in the room. Todd, are you here? Todd, if you're not here, or Nilima, thank you very much for your support. It was great to see you guys in Chicago uh, last year. Uh, Zscaler, uh, Kavitha and Brendan, thank you very much. You, uh, Kavitha was just a marvel on the stage in Bangalore uh, at a tech discussion that we had at NASDAQ. Kavitha, you were just delightful. And then also the Motwani Jadeja Foundation, and Asha's not here, but she sends her regards to all of you. They've been great in supporting this as well. At the gold level, we have Amway, APCO, Covington, FedEx, General Atomics, General Electric, Vernova, HCL Tech, Kindrel, and Marsha McClellan. Fantastic companies, reputable companies. They do great work. One of them's been in India since 1901. These are companies that are helping build modern India and the prosperity of the Indian people. We also have uh, sponsors from Citibank, Coca-Cola, Google, Microsoft, QuantumScape, Walmart, and Amazon Web Services, Boston Scientific, Corteva, Hair Drama Company. I definitely need their services. <laughs> Okay, you're alive, that's good, I like the jokes. Intuitive, Johnson & Johnson, Kalido, and Spotify. Thank you all very much for bringing us all here and making this happen. It really matters to us and we appreciate it. Friends, I also want to acknowledge and uh, pay tribute to uh, all of the folks from both governments that have joined us uh, for this discussion. Uh, we have such a slew of people, hi. Good morning, good to see you, Lindsay. Uh, we have such a good slew of people. We've got ministers and secretaries who have come. Uh, Honorable Piyush Goyal, Honorable Hardeep Singh Puri, good friends from a long time. Uh, Honorable Annapurna Devi, Honorable Shirag Paswan, Honorable Jitin Prasad, uh, PMO advisor Tarun Kapoor, and so many others. The government of India is always available and accessible and, and opens its doors for us so that we can convey our members' respectful and constructive input. Uh, we also have a, an amazing U.S. government delegation, including the governor of Iowa, the Honorable Kim Reynolds, uh, U.S. Ambassador Eric Garcetti, and all of our embassy friends, welcome. Uh, XM Chair uh, Rita Jo Lewis, uh, Assistant Secretary of State Don Liu, uh, Assistant Secretary of State Ambassador Don Liu, eh, got that right. Uh, my dear friend uh, Nisha Biswal, who's the Deputy Head of the uh, Development Finance Corporation of the United States. Ambassador Geetha Rao Gupta, who's the President's Envoy for International Global Women's Issues. 
Uh, we have Brendan Lynch, who's the lead negotiator for South Asia at the uh, United States Trade Representative's Office. Deputy Assistant Secretary of State Nancy Jackson. Uh, welcome, Nancy. You have a job that I did once, and I, I know it's one of the toughest jobs in the government. So uh, great to have you here, and thank you for giving us time. Assistant U.S. Uh, Administrator for Asia Anjali Kaur is also here, and she's been a wonderful driving force for engagement with all of the countries of South Asia and for leveraging India's partnership, uh, or rather our partnership with India, uh, in countries around the world. And my dear friend Jajjit Singh is also here. He's the head of Select USA. There may be others from the U.S. government. I feel like it must be end of your budget uh, travel season, but uh, <laughs> Lindsay, Lindsay Ford, the senior director for the NSC uh, and the president's representative. Thank you very much. So friends, I want to offer a couple framing thoughts. Um, number one, we've never had it so good between the United States and India. We have never had it so good. And yet, um, every day when I turn on Twitter, a, a ruthless addiction uh, that was fed to me by Nisha Biswal a long time ago, I look at negativity. You know, there's a lot of negativity in free and open and democratic societies. Uh, Americans talking about India, India talking about it, Indians talking about America. And so the purpose of this conference, I, I said this to uh, Minister Josh Shunker when we met on Friday or Thursday of last week. I said the purpose of this conference is to shine a beacon of positivity about the United States-India relationship. Amidst, you know, oceans of Russian agitprop and uh, negative influence in the United States and around the world, amidst uh, the pressure that we're all feeling strategically from the People's Republic of China, amidst all of the, the problems in the Middle East and in Europe, the wars raging in the Middle East and Europe, the fact is the U.S.-India relationship, the relationship between the two greatest pillars of democracy and freedom on this planet is the most important bilateral relationship in the world. And we have to get it right. If we don't get it right in this 21st century, where free and open societies are beset by so many challenges and so much negativity, then the world that our children will inherit will not be as good as the world we enjoy now. As a uh, career diplomat, I have seen more wave chop turbulence and instability in the world at this juncture than I've seen probably in my entire career. And we just had a very solemn and sober and uh, uh, respectful tribute to uh, the lives lost on September 11 last night on this stage. And I'm very mindful of that. And if you think about 9-11, and I mentioned this to Jay as well, 9-11 was a watershed in the U.S.-India relationship. It reminded us that we have far more in common than we have that drives us apart. The other watershed was the pandemic, taught us emphatically whom we can trust and also taught us whom we cannot trust. And so if you look at the work of the US and Indian governments over the past three, four years, it's been predicated on trust, right? And it's pretty clear to tell whom you can and cannot trust. And I think we have rushed into the notion that when it comes to supply chains and their resilience and security, when it comes to manufacturing the essential components of the future, including semiconductors, when it comes to ensuring the peace and happiness and well-being of our people, including healthcare and advanced uh, technologies to solve the problems of the day, quantum computing, artificial intelligence, we have a task force on that. The US and India not only trust one another, but they want to achieve that vision of what is possible between our countries not only for themselves and for our 1.8 billion citizens, but for the entire world. So this conference is about trust, it's about hope, it's about positivity. It is about seeing a brighter world, a more stable world, where the two greatest democracies are not only prosperous, but are working very well with each other to secure the happiness of our people and for all of the people of the world. It's interesting to me how much the US and India are converging on issues in every dimension. In the Middle East, where we find ourselves largely on the same side of things, in the Indo-Pacific through the Quad, where we have an almost perfect synchronicity of views, in Africa, in the Indian, in, in the Indian Ocean region, uh, in, um, in global issues, including the great challenges of climate change that we all need to address. The congruity between our countries is so positive these days uh, that I want to tell a little story, and some of you have heard it before. Back in uh, 2000, I was the staff assistant to a gentleman named Mark Grossman, who was a big senior official at State. 
And I was told by Mark to organize the discussion between the Indian Foreign Secretary and Under Secretary Grossman, uh, called the, um, I think it was called like the Foreign Office Dialogue. And you know, it's a broad agenda. You sit for three hours, you have lunch, and you talk about the world. And so I did all the intizam and the arrangements and the cup of coffee and everything, and the, you know, the bureau gave all the papers. And the meeting was a complete disaster where the US and India, Washington and Delhi, didn't agree on anything. You know, three hours of excruciatingly painful discussion. And at the end of it, I walked out very glum, depressed, and Mark put his hand on my shoulder and I said, gosh boss, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, that was a disaster. He said, no, 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 don't worry about it, it's always like this with, uh, with Delhi and Washington, don't, don't sweat it. And friends, how far have we come since then? And it's because of serious effort by everybody in this room and many, many thousands in both countries, millions indeed, through bipartisan consensus, the nuclear deal, which we all thought impossible, got done. The military agreements that we all thought impossible got done. The intelligence cooperation and law enforcement cooperation after September 11 got done. We are now forging ahead on all kinds of ambitious new things. I saw the defense minister in Washington a couple weeks ago, congratulated him on the SOSA, uh, the security of supply arrangement that both governments just uh, agreed a few days ago. So the boulder is rolling downhill. And let me leave you with a final thought. Do not succumb to negativity. There's tons of it on social media. Do not accept that narrative. When you look at the US-India relationship, it is in fantastic shape. And it still has tremendous potential because it reflects the potential of the American and the Indian people, 1.8 billion freedom-loving people. And so as this conference kicks off, it is the India Ideas Summit. I want us all to ideate about what we need to do, governments, companies, and institutions to drive our people in the world toward greater happiness. Here at the US Chamber of Commerce, we believe in the founder's credo of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I think all Indian and Indians and Americans do. I wish you all great success with this uh, conference. Thank you all for coming. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ambassador Keshub, for setting the stage for what promises to be an insightful and exciting day.